Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. If you've been wanting to learn how to make a quilt but were afraid to try, consider making a rag quilt. They're really easy and very quick to make. You can make a small one in a day. So let's take a look at a rag quilt. This is a small baby rag quilt I made a few years ago. Now remember, rag quilting is not just for babies. You can make these for all ages. But here you'll see all of these seams. And in rag quilting, we do things in reverse. Instead of bringing your fabrics front sides together in stitch, you bring them back sides together in stitch. And when you clip the seams, and put it in your washing machine and dryer that fluffs up and so in the middle you can see the fabrics that are either on the back and or in the middle they show through to the front so when you're selecting fabrics just go through and pick colors that are in your top fabric and that way it'll bring everything out even more when you're making a rag quilt and you're selecting the fabric make sure you're using 100% cotton. I recommend you use at least three layers of fabric and you can use more if you like. You can use all flannel, denim, and quilting fabric. You can mix your fabrics together. For instance, flannel and quilt fabric or denim and quilt fabric. So mix your fabrics around, just make sure they're 100% cotton. Make sure in your middle layer it works best if you're using a solid color. It's going to show up more. Here are some suggested layouts. You can cut a square out of your fabric and then you have all of these seams that you're going to stitch. So this is just a suggested stitch pattern. So for beginners, I recommend you either start out with a square or you do a rectangle. And here is a suggested layout for a rectangle. Now if you're interested in doing a rectangle using denim fabric and quilting fabric, then click on the link in the upper right hand corner. In this demonstration, I'm going to make a 40 inch square rag quilt. I'm going to use three layers of fabric. The flannel is going to be on the top and quilt fabric will be in the middle and on the back. I'm using flannel fabric on the front. So lay that fabric down first with the front side of the fabric facing down. My other two fabrics are 100% cotton quilting fabric and I'm laying it down next and it doesn't matter if it's front side down or front side up, either way, because it's going to show no matter what. For the fabric on the back, put the back side of the fabric against the other fabric. So the pretty side is showing on this side and the pretty side is showing on this side. I've used a long ruler and placed it in that middle area approximately where it is. Having this ruler in here is going to help everything from bunching up as you fold it. So now fold it all in half. Bring the edges together and take your time lining it up. Reach inside and push against that ruler to make sure it's not bunched up in the middle. Remove the ruler. Place pins along the center fold edge over here. Then stitch one half inch seam all the way down. Place the back of the rag quilt facing up. Here is the center seam that you just stitched. Place your ruler here, fold this edge into that center seam, line it up along there and push that ruler against 
your folded edge over here to make sure it doesn't jam up. Then remove the ruler, pin this edge all the way down, stitch a half inch seam all the way down. Then go over to this side and do the same thing. Have the back of the quilt facing up and fold over to where you have this seam here showing. Place your ruler on top and you're going to place the 3 8 inch mark on your ruler on top of your stitch line. So line it up and take your time lining it up. You may have to adjust every time you move the ruler and you're going to cut this edge off. So you're cutting just a little bit of it off. And then just keep moving the ruler down your rag quilt, trimming 1 eighth of an inch off of your seam. Then move over to the next seam and do the same thing and then do the same thing to the third seam. Here are the three seams and this is the back side of the rag quilt. Fold the back sides together and line up these seams to where they match. Place pins all along this folded edge. Then stitch one half inch seam all the way across. Before you begin stitching, take this seam here and cut in towards that seam that's going along here and fold one half of the seam going in the opposite direction than the one on top and it will be much easier to stitch over that seam. Here is the seam we just stitched. Take your other two edges, bring them in to that center seam and place pins along there and do the same thing on this one. Pin the edges, then stitch one half inch seam on each edge. Trim all the seams down to three eighths of an inch wide. One of my edges here was the fabric was a little uneven so I'm just going to trim it to where it's a little more even. On all four edges, you're going to stitch a 3 8 inch wide seam all the way around. And again, you do that on all four edges, 3 8 inch wide. For this last step, you're going to need some very sharp scissors. These are standard scissors right here. If you're going to use regular scissors, make sure they're very, very sharp. Here is another pair of scissors that have a spring action on it. This is a better choice than this one because of all the clipping that you're going to do. This is going to take some of the pressure off of your hand. Here is one that is specifically made for rag quilting. They are extremely sharp. When you're not using these, make sure they are kept in the locked position. Here is the lever that you would move. Make sure you keep them out of reach of small children. They are extremely dangerous for little ones if they should get a hold of it and manage to get it unlocked. These are my preferred shears to use when doing rag quilting. I purchased mine off of Amazon.com. You probably or maybe can get them at Joann Fabrics and Crafts or check the, their website Joann.com. How I did the corners when I clipped around these was that I kind of went in at a pie shape and what you want to be careful that you do not clip through your stitch line that you did here and you just go in and do little clips oh anywhere from an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch eighth of an inch is better 
and you just go all the way around. Let me show you one other area that I would did over here. When you come to an area that looks like this, I just went right up to that seam as close as I could get to it, right there like that. Then on, when you come to an area like this, just clip it real close. Sorry, my hand is in the way. And then, because these are so sharp, you can go through all six layers at the same time. So I recommend you put on a good movie, make yourself a cup of coffee or tea, and relax and begin clipping. After you finish clipping all of the seams, then put it in the washing machine. And during the wash cycle, you'll see it begin to fluff up like you see it here. After you finished washing it, then put it in the dryer. And every 15, 20 minutes, check your lint trap because the lint trap will get very, very full. Well, I hope you give rag quilting a try. I think you'll really enjoy it. And these projects are truly very quick. For more rag quilting projects and other beginner's quilt projects, play this video until a green screen appears and then click on the links. If you like this video, please click on thumbs up and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Click on the bell and enter your email address so you receive those email notifications about my latest video. If you're not receiving the emails, then go to your cell phone or iPad, click on settings, and turn notifications on. This is Maria, this is Jamie, this is Bob, this is Connie, and you all know Manny. Bye-bye!